Well, my dear students, my dear English language students, uh, well, you know, right now I'm not in my office. I'm, uh, well, I'm in a bank trying to exchange my money uh, for the local currency units. Uh, hello, anyway, you know, while I'm waiting for my turn uh, to do that, so, you know, I have just uh, written down a couple of stories, okay? Uh, short, short, uh, but I believe uh, captivating stories, which occurred to me. Well, another couple of stories, right? Well, these are for uh, elementary, uh, elementary English students. Well, uh, but it doesn't mean that uh, students of a higher level shouldn't listen to it. On the contrary, or they say, the boot is on the other foot. You should. So, I hope that. It'll be interesting for you. Well, I have, I have prepared two stories. So the first story is the following. Now, the assignment, as usual, it, this is uh, listening for fun only. Listening for fun. Just enjoy listening and uh, living through the same situation. Uh, uh, pretend that you were in my shoes. Well, um, as, an, as an assignment, probably you might uh, write down um, a summary based on the listening uh, in order to practice your listening and writing skills, okay? Remember that uh, the one who can write summaries preferably um, experience a few problems with uh, taking IELTS ring uh, examination. That's true. Okay, let's get down to the um, uh, main part and uh, the first story. Here it is. The situation I would like to talk about occurred in the United Arab Emirates. It was Thursday, and you should know that in Muslim countries, residents are off on Thursdays and Fridays, just like in Christian countries, people uh, relax on Fridays and Saturdays. So I was off too. Well, I didn't have any particular plans for that day, and I decided to go swimming because I liked it very much. Indeed, I practice swimming every day. And I took my beach bag with some usual swimming stuff, you know, with towel, okay, some lotions, etc., uh, a mobile phone, and set up for an isolated beach where a few people usually come. Well, in fact, I was the only person having arrived at the old beach. And I was glad there was nobody around. You see, I don't like when there are a lot of people around to. I don't know why. Well, suddenly I could see a small island roughly four kilometers away from the coast. Well, why not, I thought to myself. I can swim pretty well, it's true. And I can reach the island to enjoy lying on its beach under the palms. Happily, my back, uh, my back was water resistant and it wasn't heavy. I got into the water and started to swim towards the island. Well, uh, the water was perfect as usual, and uh, I swam on and on. Of course, it wasn't that easy to do because of the back. It wasn't uh, quite comfortable, but it was okay with me. Suddenly, I heard a noise, <laughs> like the one motorboats usually produce when moving. Uh, frankly speaking, in the beginning, I thought to myself that it, it uh, resembled uh, the noise made by the propeller uh, uh, of uh, Carlson. Okay, anyway. So, um, motorboats usually pr uh, produce such sounds when moving. It was heard from a long distance, and uh, I paid no attention to it in the beginning. So, as I kept on swimming, the noise approached, and I thought that it could be like a large boat. A few seconds later, a military boat appeared from nowhere. Yeah, a military one. There were a few officers standing on the deck of the cutter and looking down at me with a great interest. And we had a following conversation. The captain, sir, what are you doing here? Me, can't you see? I'm swimming, trying to reach that island. Any problem? The captain, yes, sir, you seem to have a big problem. The thing is that you have just crossed the state border between the United Arab Emirates and my country, and I'm afraid we will have to arrest you. 
<laughs> to say that I was shocked is to say nothing. I wasn't aware uh, I was so clear to the Akvo border. Excuse me. The border of what country have I just transgressed? Iran, sir, he replied. Oh, gosh, I came to, uh, to realize that I found myself in a very, very bad situation. It was like a dead end with no way out, because I had heard much about the country. I mean, Iran, uh, with its strict rules, uh, great control of everybody and everything moving in and out. Well, for some reason, I asked the man, excuse me, sir, how many meters are there from this point back to the border? 50 meters, sir, he replied. Oh, that was my only chance. There is no need to worry about the incident, I said to him. I can return to the Emirates right now. No, uh, we may not just leave you with it, he, re he replied. We will have to fire, not at you, of course, but up at the skies. It is a usual procedure of detaining. Oh, oh gosh, sir, I will swim as fast as I could not to irritate you. Please let me go. I promise I will never do anything like this. It's a good lesson for me. Saying that I got under the water, I jumped under the water trying to swim as fast as I could. Believe me or not, but I swam really fast. When I came up to the air to breathe in, the military men were gone. Happily, I looked at the long distant beach with regret continue to swim to my native land. <laughs> yeah, that was the first story. Uh, this, this is a true story. Well, um, just, uh, you see, mm, anything uh, may happen to anybody. So the other story is the following. As you might have understood, uh, so I like traveling. I am into traveling and whenever I have the slightest opportunity, I do that. I never miss uh, the boat. Okay, there were three of us wanted to travel around Asia. Me, a guy from a small town, and his girlfriend. We bought an air uh, we bought air tickets from the Stone City to Singapore, as it was our first destination. Upon arriving at the local airport, uh, we started towards the passport control border, where the local security service officers were checking the passports of all passengers who had just arrived in the country. Well, the line was pretty long. There were about 60 people in front of us, and we started to converse to people standing around. One of them was a Chinese woman who was quite talkative, really talkative, like a parrot. To our single question how she was doing, she replied, letting us know about her family problems, touristic destinations she wanted to reach, possible problems one could have staying in local hotels. Frankly speaking, I should admit that I got tired of listening to her nonstop talks and walked a bit up the queue to look around. And it was a good decision of mine, because as I came closer to the check-in point, I heard the officers asking a female guest how much money she had on her. She replied that she had roughly $200. They immediately replied that the sum of money wasn't enough to live properly in their country. And perhaps uh, she was like, uh, okay. And therefore, not to expose her to a risk, uh, they would have to put a uh, deport mark into her passport. Uh, that means in particular terms that uh, she wouldn't be allowed to enter uh, the country within the upcoming five years period. She started to cry with bitter tears uh, rolling down her cheeks, but that didn't work out. Well, I got frightened because totally we had only a thousand of US dollars. We began to talk over the problem in a whisper so that no one could make out our problem. But the Chinese lady was a super ear creature because she suddenly came up to us saying that she could help us out by lending us three grand, providing that we return the money after the checking procedure was over. We were very glad and grateful to her for the money. Naturally, we became the victims of her tongue, but it was worth it. Happily, we went through all the questions, long staring at us, etc. Finally, we got out of the airport building and we suddenly gave back the money to the owner 
with many words of gratitude. Then we got on the bus, which brought us to the city center where we could find a hotel. Well, if I remember rightly, a three-star hotel. The management of the hotel kept um, to a strict gender policy, according to which men mightn't live in the same room as girls unless they were spouses. Because of that reason, I had to share the same room with my friend while his girlfriend occupied another one. Okay. Well, I got tired very much and uh, went to bed immediately, while the other two went downstairs to have fun in the local bar. A few hours later, when I was sleeping soundly, I heard the door open. Through the half-opened eyes, I saw Ruslan, it's his, it was his name, walking up to me, staggering. He was absolutely drunk. Bowing down, he whispered, George, are you asleep? Oof, I decided to pretend that I was. Then suddenly he cried, Oh gosh, there are so many of you here. Go away, get out, leave me alone, you green demons. I don't want to see you. I don't want to talk to you. Fuck off you. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, go away and don't touch me. <laughs> Then he got up and ran up towards the other wall. I just want you to understand that uh, he was a lofty guy, so um, he was pretty tall, and he was okay. How to say, massive, right? And he got up and ran up towards the other wall, which wasn't a wall actually, but a window with half-transparent glass. He smashed against it and started to roll down. You know, like uh, like a raindrop uh, rolling down the uh, glass. Of course, I wasn't asleep anymore. Well, but I got frightened, as it was my first experience of seeing someone who had drunk till all was blue. So he was lying on the floor motionlessly. But he was breathing, and that was a good sign. I tried to pick him up uh, to lay on the bed, but he was too heavy. Well, he deserves at least a blanket, I said to myself. Well, this is what happened to me in Singapore. Well, actually, it's not uh, the only, the whole story, it's only the beginning of it. Anyway, um, it's kind of a start, uh, starter. Thank you very much for your attention, guys. So um, write down your commands, please. Feel free to write down your commands, okay? Uh, get in touch with me, and uh, through your commands, you can do that. I will reply. And of course, uh, you can uh, practice your writing skills uh, well because you can uh, you can write your summary based on the two stories. And uh, believe me, I will check uh, them. And if you want, I will send you uh, your uh, check to work. Check to work. Thank you very much for your attention. Bye. Yeah.